Bonjour and welcome to Gay Paris, or in English, Paris, France. We're going to introduce a couple of famous landmarks in Paris that you might want to visit on your next trip there. The Eiffel Tower was built for the International Exhibition of Paris of 1889 commemorating the centenary of the French Revolution. The Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII of England, opened the tower. Of the 700 proposals submitted in a design competition, Gustav Eiffel's was unanimously chosen. The structure was built between 1887 and 1889 as the entrance arch for the Exposition Universelle, a World's Fair marking the centennial celebration of the French Revolution. Eiffel originally planned to build the tower in Barcelona for the Universal Exposition of 1888, but those responsible at the Barcelona City Hall thought it was a strange and expensive construction which did not fit into the design of the city. After the refusal of the Consistory of Barcelona, Eiffel submitted his draft to those responsible for the Universal Exhibition in Paris, where he would build his tower a year later, in 1889. The tower was inaugurated on March 31, 1889 and opened on May 6. 300 workers joined together 18,038 pieces of puddled iron using two and a half million rivets. The risk of accident was great for unlike modern skyscrapers the tower is an open frame without any intermediate floors except the two platforms. However, because Eiffel took safety precautions including the use of movable stagings, guardrails, and screens, only one man died in the construction. The tower was met with much criticism from the public when it was built, with many calling it an eyesore. Newspapers of the day were filled with angry letters from the arts community of Paris. Eiffel had a permit for the tower to stand for 20 years, meaning it would have to be dismantled in 1909 when its ownership would revert to the city of Paris. The city had planned to tear it down, but as the tower proved valuable for communication purposes, it was allowed to remain after the expiration of the permit. The military used it to dispatch Parisian taxis to the front line during the First Battle of the Marne, and it therefore became a victory statue of that battle. The first and second levels are accessible by stairways and lifts, while the third level summit is only accessible by lift. Maintenance of the tower includes applying 50 to 60 tons of paint every seven years to protect it from rust. In order to maintain a uniform appearance to an observer on the ground, three separate colors of paint are used on the tower, with the darkest on the bottom and the lightest at the top. On occasion, the color of the paint is changed. The tower is currently painted a shade of brownish gray. On the first floor, there are interactive consoles hosting a pole for the color to use for a future session of painting. In commenting on the tower's design, Gustav Eiffel said, now to what phenomenon did I give primary concern in designing the tower? It was wind resistance. Well then, I hold that the curvature of the monument's four outer edges, which is as mathematical calculation dictated it should be, will give a great impression of strength and beauty, for it will reveal to the eyes of the observer the boldness of the design as a whole. So there you have it. It was designed basically for wind resistance purposes. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the tower has been used for radio transmission. In 1909, a permanent underground radio center was built near the South Pillar and still exists today. Upon the Nazi occupation of Paris in 1940, the lift cables were cut by the French so that Adolf Hitler would have to climb the steps to the summit. The parts to repair them were allegedly impossible to obtain because of the war. In 1940, German soldiers had to climb to the top to hoist the swastika, but the flag was so large it blew away just a few hours later, and it was replaced by a smaller one. When visiting Paris, Hitler chose to stay on the ground. It was said that Hitler conquered France, but not the Eiffel Tower. A Frenchman scaled the tower during the German occupation to hang the French flag. In August 1944, when the Allies were nearing Paris, Hitler ordered the military governor of Paris to demolish the tower along with the rest of the city. The military governor disobeyed the order. The lifts of the tower were working normally within hours of the liberation of Paris. Now let's go to our field reporter, Mona, who has information on the Louvre Museum. Hello, my name is Mona, and I am welcoming you to the Louvre Museum. 
The history of the museum dates back to the end of the 12th century. The Louvre has dominated central Paris since that time. Built on the city's western edge, the original structure was gradually engulfed as the city grew. It started as a palace, hosting such greats as Francois I and Louis XIV. Over time, the building was added onto, but after the completion of Versailles, it sat dormant for many years. With the French Revolution, the Louvre was transformed. In 1793, the Central Museum was open to the public and the quantity of exhibits grew, taking over the building. Charles X added more room and exhibition spaces. At the outbreak of war in World War II in September 1939, the museum's collections were evacuated, with the exception of the heaviest pieces which were sandbagged. The works were initially deposited at the Chateau de Chambord in the Loire Valley before being dispersed to numerous other sites, mostly chateaus. For safety reasons, many works were moved several times during the war. Although mostly empty but for plaster casts, the Louvre reopened under the occupation in September 1940. The Germans were also responsible for taking some of these masterpieces back after the war and had to be confiscated again by the Allies. Currently at the Louvre, there are exhibits that change regularly, an auditorium where you have lectures and also concerts, and then various activities throughout the museum, including thematic trails that you may follow, guided tours of the museum, or workshops or classes to learn something new about art. Hope you come and visit. We would enjoy having you there. See you soon. Thank you, Mona, for that great field report on the Louvre Museum. We hope you've enjoyed the information given on the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre Museum in Paris. We hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching the video.